What is up? The title of this episode is How to Friend. This is a rerun from December 2021. And I remember this being an episode that people enjoy because a lot of times at the end of the year, we're reevaluating friendships, relationships. We're checking ourselves like, man, was I was I a good friend? And there's definitely a special responsibility we have as Christians on being a, a friend. So this is a great episode for that. And if you are reevaluating relationships, reevaluating, looking at your friendships, another good episode that you might want to check out is we're friends, right? I'm going to try to have that link dropped in the disc- in the description as well. So check out this episode and hope you enjoy. Nope. We don't need to speed up the process. We don't need to nuke this. You know why? Because this is the non-microwave truth. C.L. Whiteside is in the building and you are listening to the non-microwave truth. Are you glad Christmas is over? Are you already looking forward to the new year? Are you one of those new year resolution people? Or are you sad that Christmas is over? Our first world problem today Think about Jesus. Think about Jesus. I got one more Christmas question since it still is the month of December. Do you think our brother, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, will be the type to buy the 12 disciples a gift? Or do you think he is the type that would have made them a gift? You got to remember, Jesus has some skills. Of course, we know about him performing miracles, but Jesus was a carpenter. You know he had to be an awesome carpenter. So do you think he was the type that would save up his money just to show him and prove a point that how much he loved him and buy them a gift? Or do you think he was a type that spent his time, allowed his hands, they probably were rough hands too. He probably needed some lotion. You know, they didn't have a lot of lotion back then. But in today's world, would he buy them a gift or would he make them a gift? And you know, his thoughtfulness and attention to detail was off the charts. I mean, he's got. So he knew that gift that sometimes you can overlook and be like, man, I, for, I didn't even realize I needed this or I wanted this. And that's how I could see Jesus being. Now, I do remember talking about this with some little kids and they were like, Jesus would have just performed a miracle and gave someone like a million dollars. And it's like, nope, I, I, I do not see that. I, if he did perform a miracle, it would be like healing someone who has a, a bad hip or like providing a, a meal for some some orphans or something of that nature. So this is our first world problem question today, especially for the 12 disciples. Do you think Jesus would buy a gift? Would he make a gift? Or would Jesus say, you know what? I'm not giving material gifts at all. And I could see the Pharisees coming at him. Like with Jesus, the great teacher over here, he gave gifts. The great teacher over there did this. What are you doing for your disciples? Ooh, he probably would have a cold, cold parable or something about that. But what do you think Jesus would do? Buy the gift, make the gift, or no gift at all. Love to hear from you on Instagram or Twitter. Remember, my handle is championlife23. Let me know what you're thinking. And this is our first world problem. It is dinner time. If one of your friends was to rate you as a friend, one to ten what do you think they're rating you would they give you a five would they give you a ten like are you the perfect friend and i just really want to talk about that today and the title of this episode is how to friend like how to be a a good friend and what does a good friend look like especially as a christian and i see so many people who are great friends to something but they're not a good friend to jesus Like they're so worried about being loyal to the wrong things and they forget to be loyal to the creator. They're so loyal to the creation, but they forget about the creator, the one who's in charge. And I know people have made plenty of rules on what it means to be a great friend. Like if you're my friend, that means you're always there for me. If you're my friend, you ready to ride or die. If you're my friend, you're going to come out and support me. What what does it mean to be a great friend to you? What should it mean to be a great friend to you? And I just want you to look at today in this episode of How to Friend. Are you living by some rules and, and ready to die for some rules that you should not be ready to live or die for? And I want to look at some rules of Christ and some other people in the Bible. 
And I also want to challenge some people who say, Jesus, Jesus is my only friend. He's the only one that I need because I have been burned by people. I have been hurt by people. No one ever treats me how I treat them as a friend. And I just want you to think about, is everyone around you wicked or could it be that you are possibly the problem? I don't know, though. I'm not I'm not casting stones. I'm just more so throwing that out there. And like I was saying, I want to look at some biblical examples and things in the Bible, not not the typical stuff like that's Captain Obvious, like don't talk behind a person's back or make sure that you're nice to them. But some things that are in the Bible or something that we can model after Christ. Now, there are six different points that I'm going to bring up on this episode of how to friend. And the first one is a friend isn't for each and every circumstance. <laughs> and I want you to think about it like this. Like, how many pair of shoes do you have? You don't wear your boots out to the beach. You don't wear your flip-flops out in the snow. I mean, maybe if you're taking the trash out, but you get my point. You get what I'm saying. We have to be careful about trying to put friends in spaces or in rooms that God doesn't necessarily have them designated for. And what I mean by that is, and I think that's that goes for a person who who maybe feels slighted or rubbed the wrong way that they didn't get invited to something or, or put in a situation. And what comes to mind is when you think about this, Jesus had 12 disciples. He had 12 disciples. That means he selected 12 men to do a specific line of work. But if you ever notice, Jesus didn't bring every single disciple to every single event or let them see every single thing. And I think about Peter, James, and John, where he talks about, you know, bringing them to up the mountain, allowing him to see the transfiguration. And a lot of times people get jealous because they like, I'm so mad. Why didn't you invite me to the party? But we don't get mad when friends don't invite us to a shootout or a riot or some some something that's going to be like strenuous work. Like one of my friends was like, I can't even lie. I didn't really want to help you move. That's, that's a lot of work. And I, and I can't be mad at him. So we can't get mad when sometimes they don't invite us to, to the party because sometimes that party is not going to be all fun and games. And that might not be the room that God has designated for you to be in at that specific or particular point of time. Like I look at James. James was one of the three disciples to see Jesus transfiguration. I also see Jesus raising one from the dead. But James is also the first disciple to die. And I'm guessing all the disciples or anyone would say, I would love to see Jesus in all his glory. But a lot of people are like, I'm not trying to die. I am not trying to die. On to the second point on this episode of How to Friend. And I want you to put this in your mind or think about this. How would you act towards someone who seems to be getting the blessing or the thing that you have been praying for? or that you feel like you should have, or that you actually deserve? Like, could you still celebrate them? Could you still be happy for them? Have you ever been in a position where you look at someone and you're like, man, they're not really happy for me. They're not really celebrating this for me. And this is a scary point, because I don't want anybody twisting what I'm saying, because too many people already think they have too many haters and too many people jealous of them. And it's like, man, people don't even care half the time. So let me rephrase this point. I got it in my head now. Protecting titles versus doing what's actually best for someone else. And you might be like, what? What you talking about? But let's look at Jonathan and David in the Bible. This is the future King David. And I just want to look at the friendship that they have between, between Jonathan and David. And their relationship is somewhat complex because David is supposed to be the next king. If Jonathan's dad was doing what he was supposed to do, Jonathan would be the next king. But since his father, Saul, wasn't obedient to God, that got stripped. That title got stripped from their, their family lineage. Now, if you know anything about history, it's supposed to get passed down to the son. Now, most people wouldn't be cool with someone that they knew was going to take the job that maybe they wanted or at least everyone else in the family or their circle thought that they should have. They, they just wouldn't do it. But we see with Jonathan and David, this isn't the case at all. And in fact, Jonathan is like, man, I, I actually like David. David seems like a, a cool dude, despite his dad having hatred towards David, despite his dad trying to get him on the side of like, man, forget David. Like, I need to kill David. 
And it tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 19, it says Saul's anger flared up at Jonathan because Jonathan was actually helping David escape from his his father who, who wanted to kill him. But Jonathan was like, he's a good dude. I'm not going to be mad at him or just hate him because my father hates him. Like, we actually cool. That's my friend. That's my boy. And this is despite his father saying, you son of a perverse and rebellious woman. Have you really sided with David? His father asked. And his father made it clear to him. He said, man, as long as David lives on this earth, neither you nor your kingdom will be established. So his dad tells him, like, if David is alive, you aren't going to be king, son. And just think about that. Let that be something our family or parents have been feeding us our entire life. Like I see that in basketball and football all the time where parents think their their son or daughter is going to be the, the, the second coming of LeBron James or make it big. And then somebody else comes and is there to steal the spotlight that the parent has really wanted. And more than not, that messes up the child's relationship and makes the child jealous or envious and not be able to be friends with that person. But Jonathan asks his father this. He says, why should he be put to death? Like, what has David done wrong? Man, and Saul got so mad at Jonathan that he hurled a spear at him and tried to kill him. Then Jonathan knew. Jonathan knew that he had picked the side of David and it was a wrap pretty much. Jonathan made me think about a reason why we aren't the friend we're supposed to be or that God designed us to be. It's because when we have the opportunity to bless someone else, we look at it as a burden. And we start thinking to ourselves, if I bless this person, how am I going to get this back? Or, you know what, I'm tired of blessing them. They never bless me. And we don't look at it as an opportunity. We just see it as a, as a burden. And what we see with Jonathan, Jonathan did not, didn't deny the fact that God was telling him, bless David, make sure you keep David safe. Because I got breaking news for you. Every relationship is not going to be a give and take. Sometimes it's going to be a give, 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 and give some more. And I'm not saying to allow people to take advantage of you, but you just got to understand what is right to do. What is God telling you to do? Jonathan did what was right, even when it was tough. And that's a situation where it's so it would have been so easy for him to support what was family, what was easy. But instead, he supported what was actually right. He's like, I don't have a reason to kill him. I don't have a reason to hate on him. So I'm not going to do it. This is actually my friend. So he said, forget the title and forget what everyone has told me I'm supposed to be. I'm going to allow God to determine what I should be and what David should be. And that brings us into our, our third point. And man, Generation Z and millennials, man, we got this really bad. We got this bad, bad. I've heard so many people say a real friend supports you no matter what. Nah, no, they don't. No, they don't. And if you don't support them in the way that they want to be supported, they will flip it on you and be like, you don't like me or you don't want what's best for me. And I'm talking about when someone is going against God's word. And on this episode of how to friend, I'm gonna make it very, very clear. You should never go against God's word to appease someone and their feelings. You just shouldn't. And you got to ask yourself, you got to be real with yourself. Are you asking your friends to support you in any way that goes against God's word? Asking your friends to support you in some mess. And looking into that more, you can support someone when they're wrong, but don't support them in being wrong. And I think about Derek Carr. I talked about this a few episodes ago. The quarterback for the, the Raiders, he clearly was saying, my friends are wrong but I just want to be there to show them love and to remember that they have grace, that they have God. He wasn't saying like, hey, drink some more and go drive. Or, you know, what you did, that's not wrong at all. That, that, that's the other person's fault. And part of supporting someone when they're wrong is telling them that they're wrong. I just think about two of my friends, uh, my guy said and Kent, and I just remember them breaking down and explaining to me how I was wording some things and saying some things and how I was wrong. And it, it doesn't necessarily feel good at the time, but that's being a real friend to be like, hey, CEO, you should have worded it like this. You was harsh in this aspect. You know, when you come at people or when you joke around with this, that's crossing that line. That's what friends are supposed to do. They, they, don't, they shouldn't let you walk around with egg on your face. So best believe sometimes telling someone they're wrong is actually the best support. And I know there are those cases, though, where you have people who are they're, they're out of control. And on this episode of How to Friend, 
I really want to look at the person who I would call a, a drowning victim. And I know I've mentioned this before. When you see somebody drowning, especially if they big, they, they throwing elbows, they coughing up water. If you get too close to them, you're going to end up getting knocked out. So you can throw a life jacket out there. You can throw a floating device, but don't jump in that water and try to save them when they go going panic and acting crazy and acting a, a pure D fool. Like, uh, uh-uh. you, you mess around and you get knocked out. And I think about this is if you get too close it will cost you to and increase your chances of drowning. And examples that I mean by this is like covering up for them. Or if you know every time y'all go to the mall that your friend steals, don't go to the mall with them and then try to justify it. But like, well, I wasn't stealing or I didn't play as a cover up or a lookout for them. I just I just let them do them. Or, you know, every time they get to drinking, they get rowdy and they're ready to fight or she's sending thirst trap pictures to dudes, but you think that messiness is not going to trickle down to you. Ha, good one. Proverbs 13 verse 20 makes it so clear on being around janky people or surrounding yourself with those type of people. It says, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. Another version said, associate with fools and get in trouble. Can't be more clear than that. A lot of people, I think, have to ask, they, they ask themselves, do they really want real friends? Because a lot of times people want minions. They they want control. They want to be comfortable in their wrongness and they want to be comfortable in their sin. And if that's the case and you see that, you have to love them from a distance. Because friendship should be about how you grow better together. And that's our fourth point. Grow better together. And I just think about... We put loyalty or act like loyalty is owed to the wrong things or just because in high school you were there for me to cuss people out and not take any mess. I'm supposed to be loyal to you now and we 30 years old and you still trying to do the same thing to cuss people out and act a fool. Well, remember when I was there for you when you broke up with Sean? Well, now I need you to be there for me. Like, that's not the same. Sean was a a, a 15 year old sweetheart. You trying to break up with your husband. You not even broken up. I can't provide no any man for you to date or tell you to get back on the dating market. You not even divorced. And people will really try to look at you crazy or act like you're wrong for not being loyal to them when they're not doing something God's way. And you have to remember, people change. You should want people to change. You should want people to grow for the better and not be that same 12 year old. 15 year old, 20 year old that they once were. You want them to be better. You don't want them on the same stuff they were on back then. And 2 Timothy sums this up nice. It says, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, pursue faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. I'm going to jump a couple passages. It finishes up and says, opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to the knowledge of the truth and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. And that's one of the reasons that I, I thank God for my wife is just the different perspective that she provides her desire for us to grow together. And I guess I should point out or say her intentionality and focus on us growing together. Because if you're not intentional and you're not focused on it, sometimes it just naturally happens. And those are the friendships we usually love. But at times you have to be intentional and focus on it, especially with a relationship like like that. And this brings us to our, our fifth point on how to friend. You have to be willing and you have to only want to listen and hear godly advice. And if you don't fear and you don't respect the Lord, you can't give godly advice in a lot of cases. Like it's hard to be a good friend if you aren't right with God. And it's even harder to accept and to want to hear godly advice and good counsel if you're not right with God. Like that's the last thing our sinful flesh wants to hear. But that's being a good friend. Stop telling people what they want to hear. Tell them what God says. And I thought about this the other day that I could give married men, married men 
good counsel even when I was single or when I was single. And most people will say never take advice or take counsel from somebody who's not married or in the exact same position as you. But I would never tell them what I felt or what I thought they should do in that moment based off my experiences because I didn't have that experience, obviously. What I would do is I would tell them what God's word said because I knew what God's word told them to do or was saying for them to do. And I'm not talking about like prophesying or anything. I'm talking about how should I love? How should I respond in this situation? Well, God says to love by doing this. This is how you should do it. And that's the question you should always ask yourself when you are giving counsel or when you're receiving counsel. Does this match up with God's word? And the last point that I want to bring up on this episode of How to Friend is that you need to allow God to be your best friend, your, your best, best, your BFF. And the reason being is it's so hard to love someone else when you don't love yourself, how you were created and how you were made to be loved. Like, why do most people talk about other people? It's because it, it boosts themselves up. It covers up our, our own insecurities. People don't love themselves, though. And that's because they don't believe, they don't value, they don't appreciate or understand who loves them and how much God loves them. Just think about this. God chose to be a friend to us despite all of our flaws. He chose to be loyal to us, knowing we couldn't match his love or his loyalty. But one thing he did not do is force us to be his friend. And that's a lesson to learn. God loves us. Jesus died for us. He's literally always there for us. He wants us more than anything to get to know him. He's the absolute perfect friend. But yet some will reject his friendship. And it's not because it's something or someone better out there, but because they've made friends with their sinful flesh. They've made friends with this world. They've made friends with the devil. And those three amigos, they are some liars. They are haters. They never want you to have the greatest relationship ever, which is with Christ. And this is the non-microwave truth. And I have one challenge for you today. Reach out to a friend and just let them know that you are happy or excited or you are praying for God to continue to bless them and for them to continue to grow. And, and make sure you pray for them if you say you're going to pray for them. Like, do it right then and there because if you like me, you'll probably forget. Thanks for joining me on this episode today of How to Friend. If you liked it or love it, share it with a friend. Peace Punch, Captain Crunch. Say no to drugs and yes to Jesus. I'm out.